Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. King David said, it's better to be one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. And if you are happy today to be before the presence of the Lord, please say amen. amen. And if you today are thankful for everything God has done for you during this past week, please say amen. amen. And if you love Jesus, please say amen. amen. And uh, today we are happy to be together as a one family. The text for today... The Bible text is in Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. We are family. The Bible says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. We come from different places, different countries. We have different languages. Even we have different kind of food and ways of living. But today, in this place, we are one in Jesus Christ. Amen. And unity in the church is very important. Because unity will help us to fulfill the mission that God gave to the church. And you may ask today, what is the mission for the church? He said in Mark chapter 16 and the verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew chapter 24 and the verse 14, he says again, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Brothers and sisters, this church of Laguna Niguel has a special mission. Our mission is to conquer the world with the love of Jesus Christ. The mission of the church of Laguna Niguel is to conquer the city of Laguna Niguel with the love of Jesus Christ. The mission of this church is to preach to everyone that the time is coming to an end and that we have a special message for this time. The mission for this church of Laguna Niguel is to preach, to deliver the message that Jesus Christ, our high priest in the sanctuary in the most holy place, is about to finish his job as mediator and then he will come back to this earth with power and glory. Amen. What a mission we have, don't you think? It's an important mission. And we have to preach. We have to be united to fulfill this special mission. And talking about mission, I remember a couple of stories, and I will refer this quickly to you. The first one is, People who try to conquer the Mount Everest, it's difficult, almost impossible. People after or be above 8,000 feet mean sea level, since there is lack of oxygen, it's less dense, they may uh, suffer of hypoxia. But also those who try to climb the Mount Everest, they may fall in those cliffs, from those cliffs into those deep crevices where Chances to be rescued are zero. But two men decide that they wanted to conquer the Mount of Everest. Those guys were Edmund Hillary from New Zealand and Tenzing Norge from Nepal. And on May, 9, 20, May 29, 1953, they reached the top of the world. And they spent only 15 minutes up there, and they came down to the base camp. But also, there is another lady who wanted to conquer because she had a mission. And it was Amelia Earhart. It's probably one of the first ladies who obtained, who got her pilot license. And once she got that pilot license, she never stopped flying and she started setting records and 
breaking records. And then she heard about this gentleman, Charles Lindbergh, who in 1927, he flew across the Atlantic Ocean. And she decided that she wanted to be the first lady to, f across, to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. And then she started working on it. And with her 600 horsepower airplane, 420 gallons of gasoline, and just a little bit of chicken soup in her cockpit, and after 15 hours of flying, she landed that airplane in the north of Ireland. And she became famous. She was the first lady nonstop flying across the Atlantic Ocean. And then she conquered her dreams. I like what she said after this. She said that we all have dreams. We have oceans to fly if we have the heart to do it. Is it reckless, she said, maybe, but what dreams do you know about boundaries? And I believe that God has great dreams for the church of Laguna Niguel. Even he has greater dreams than the ones we have for ourselves. He says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Those are the plans of God for the church of Laguna Niguel. And there is another story that I want to talk about quickly in these few minutes. After 40 years of wandering on the wilderness, the children of Israel came to the boundaries of the promised land. Now the river, the Jordan River, it's open. They pass. The next day, the bread of the heavens stopped falling. It seas, and they have to find food in that place. And, you know, the story, they always complained for 40 years about the conditions on the desert. No water, no food. They always were, were complaining for something. But at this point, when the river is closing behind them, they have no choice but to conquer the land. They have to work now as a team, unity. They have a special mission to conquer the promised land. And there is a very interesting conversation between Joshua and Caleb in the chapter 14, the book of Joshua. Caleb came to Joshua and said, you know, I am almost 40, 80, uh, 85 years old. And I was one of those spies who came into the land, and we give a good um, statistics. We tell them what was the, the land. And I told them that we can, because God was with us. But, you know, now, 40 years later, I feel as strong as 40 years ago. I can go in war, in and out. And I want to ask you to please give me that Mount, because I believe that 40 years Caleb was wandering the wilderness, thinking on the day that he will come back to conquer the land, the promised land. And then he conquered the piece of land. These three stories have something in common. These three stories have the idea of a mission. They have the mission, and then also they have the unity to work and to conquer things that others believe is unconquerable. And God calls the church of Laguna Niguel to conquer things that maybe others believe it's unconquerable. But I want to conclude my short message for this morning telling you about the other key factor for the success of the church because we have a mission, and the word is unity. See, the mission gives to the church direction and also unity. 
A church without mission goes everywhere. A church without unity will pull in different directions. But when we have a mission and we work together, we can accomplish great things for the Lord. And Jesus Christ is praying for the church. John chapter 17 and the verse 20 and the verse 21, Jesus Christ is praying for you 2,000 years ago. And he said, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as though Father art in me and I in thee, and that they also may be one in us, that he, that he world may believe that thou hast sent me. And unity is very important in the church. And I want to conclude showing a picture. This is an oil canvas painted by Rembrandt, one of my favorite painters. 1633, he painted this beautiful. The original name is Jesus in the storm in the Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. Rembrandt is trying to play with several factors, and one of them is brightness, light, but also he's playing with darkness and shadows. And as you see at the bow of the boat, at the front, you see more light, there's more brightness. And you see those disciples trying to keep the boat afloat. They're trying the best they can. And they don't know anything else, what they can do. But you see this crushing force of the waves trying to sink the boat in the bottom of the Sea of Galilee. And Rembrandt did not paint Jesus Christ at the boat, at the bow of the boat at the front where there is more light. He painted Jesus at the stern of the boat in the very back where is darkness. And then you see some disciples surrounding Jesus Christ and getting from his eyes and from his peaceful face the peace they need to go through the storm. And you know, I believe that you know this all said that we are all in the same boat. But this church of Laguna Niguel will never face failure because Jesus Christ is in our boat. Amen. This church of Laguna Niguel will accomplish, will fulfill the mission because Jesus Christ is the captain of the boat. You believe that? Oh, brothers and sisters, my prayer today is that God comes to our church. He, he dwells in our church all the time, in our homes, in our hearts. Every day, wherever we go, let's invite Jesus Christ in our boat to be safe and complete the mission that he calls us to do in this part of the world because we come from different places of the world, but the mission is here in Laguna Niguel. God bless you.